Alright guys, welcome back to another tutorial for M Crater. Um, we're going to be finally doing crossbows. So there is a kind of limitation for this system for crossbows. It's not supported by fabric. That's the only difference. Uh, it does use MBT. I tried to design it in a way that it wouldn't use MBT, but it just turns out I'm going to need a timer because I need local variables to carry over things like the damage and the uh, MBT things. So um, yeah, unfortunately not supported by fabric. You'll have to kind of work around that or make it just an item that doesn't carry over the damage and MBT variables. That's the best I can do with the items. So there are a series of items that we created for this particular uh, crossbow. And if we right click on it, it'll pull it back and you can kind of see the animation uh, pull back and stuff like that and then it will load the final stage which if we right click again it will shoot the arrow so uh, the height can be adjusted um, it might be a little bit too high I think it might be at the top of the head where we're shooting let's just take a quick look yeah it might be just a little bit too high so what you would want to do is uh, adjust the offset for the projectile uh, to go down a little bit. I think it's actually shooting right from the top of her head. Let's take a look. Yeah, pretty much. So we want about eye height for the character, which is a little bit lower. Um, that's fine. We'll deal with that in just a sec. But uh, yeah, so that's basically it. It will take damage uh, and carry the damage over for each time the projectile, projectile is shot. So if we go a little bit lower, we will be able to get bullseye. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, Obviously, when the item breaks, we'll just shoot a few more times. Uh, we can get maybe a pig or something. It's pretty powerful, so one shot with a pig, it'll pretty much kill it. Uh, but you can basically adjust the damage of the projectile and stuff like that, too. So I'll just take these guys out. One more shot. Oh, we're gone. So that's basically what happens to it. It just disappears after. So let's go into MCrater and I'll kind of show you the procedure system. Okay, so there are five different types of items that we need to set up. So the first one is the one that you're going to actually have in your GUI. I put this under combat. Uh, there isn't really anything to do with the animation. I think this has to do with the food actually. So unfortunately that won't show any animation for the crossbow, which is kind of sucks, but... Uh, doesn't have any food properties, doesn't have an inventory technically, but that's just the default settings. And then what we have is the uh, procedure. Uh, this is the right click procedure. This is for the first and last uh, stage for the actual crossbow. So this would be the first stage procedure, which is going to do a bunch of stuff. Um, just kind of run over what it's going to be doing. We're testing if the provided item being the item in our inventory that we're using is in our main hand and that there is an arrow in the uh, player's inventory. So if those things are both true, then what we're doing is we're going to copy the provided items MBT and put it over into a MBT local variable, which is up here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that, the, that we get the damage from the provided uh, item as well. Now this has to be done before we actually update the item in the main hand so we can get the data beforehand. And then what we're doing is we're going to set the main hand item to the next stage. So very similar to how crops work, but different. It's just replacing the item instead of the actual um, block. So this will just set one hand main item. Then we're playing a sound for the start one and we're setting this to the entity's location for where the player is. Uh, we're just leaving the default pitch and level. It doesn't really matter, but it is running from the player uh, location. And then what we're doing is we're going to copy the MBT and put it onto the main hand item. Now, because the provided item is no longer being used, we're going to be using the main hand item for our targeting, which is why we're basically applying it to the main hand, not the provided entity or provided item stack. So again, uh, we're setting the damage uh, to what it was before, and then we're basically setting a delay time, 
which will vary depending on how fast you want it to reload. So if you're adding a advanced uh, like a achieve or enchantment or something like that, you might want to have a specific thing to test if there's a certain level. You would adjust this number right here uh, to make it either shoot faster or shoot slower or whatever you want to do. Uh, you would basically adjust that timer um, variable type. So with that being said, this does not work with fabric, this part right here, um, and these two parts right here. The reason being is it requires MBT and it requires the damage for local variables. Now I could, I tried putting it on to a wait timer, but local variables aren't supported. So otherwise I would be running it through there, but I can't. So I need some sort of timer which requires MBT variables. So if you don't want to pass over the MBT variables and the damage, then what you could do is you could delete all this stuff here and all that stuff and just run it through a wait timer and use that delay for your time here. So in that case, it would be eight and then you would adjust it to however you want. So that would be another option if you wanted to optimize it for fabric, but it's, pretty much going to not damage the item so it will be basically an item that can always be used kind of kind of really boring actually and pretty op depending on how you set it up so you might want to balance the power of it and stuff later on so that's the procedure for that one and then what we have is the first stage so this time we don't have it under a creative inventory but basically all the same properties as we had before and then what we're doing is we're applying it to a when item in hand tick so basically this will be running when the item is in the hand of the player and basically same idea but we have a timer set up so uh, what we're doing is we're setting the testing if the delay time is greater than zero. If that's true, then we're going to subtract the time by one. So whatever value that you put in for your timer, it's going to basically delay for that point until it reaches zero. And then what it's going to do is it's going to run this script in here. Pretty much all the stages from zero to two are like this. Um, but what it's doing is it's again testing if it's the provided item is in the main hand of the player and there's still an arrow in the inventory. So if there's both an arrow in the inventory and it's uh, the provided item is in the main hand, then what we're doing is we're going to copy out MBT again. If you want to change that, remove those two things and remove these two blocks down here. But the rest you can basically keep. You also need to remove the timer completely as well. So to kind of just recap, you would go ahead and do this and drag that over here. And then you would basically remove those and move that up there and then remove that. So you would need to basically do that and then get rid of this timer at, if you're doing it on fabric. So other than that, it's basically just the way that it is. So if we reopen it, it will be the same that we had it. So after it basically runs this particular condition, it's going to reset the uh, timer uh, to the amount of time you'll have to update that if you want it on forge and maybe adjust it based on the enchantment level or whatever you want to do with it but that's basically that part there and then the stage one same exact properties we got the trigger again another when item in main hand and same procedure um, don't think there's any difference there's only we're updating the uh, to the next stage, which is the fully pulled back version. And that's basically the only difference here. So uh, there's that. And then the fully backed version is a little bit different, I think. Uh, yes, just one procedure block different. We're actually removing the arrow this in this one. So basically the exact same thing, just we're removing the arrow from the player's inventory. We're testing if the arrow is, exists in the inventory and then we're removing it so we can get one arrow into the actual item and then the final one is probably the most complicated so this is the one with the arrow this is a right click event 
and then what we're doing is a couple different things. Uh, the first one we're running on server side just so that it doesn't uh, conflict with um, servers and multiplayer and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes the blocks for the sound and stuff like that will run both on server and uh, like world side as well as player side so it will kind of double up. So usually it has to do with the actual brown blocks or orange blocks so I just made sure to run it on server side. Might not need it but just in case. Uh, what we're doing is we're just going to shoot a projectile which is found under projectiles. That one right there. And we're using this block for the pink one and we're selecting an arrow. And then what we're doing is we're allowing pickup so we can actually pick up the arrows after. And then what we're doing is we're going to do a little bit of math and we're getting the entity's position plus the value of look vector of the provided entity which will basically shoot from wherever the entity is looking at in that direction. And then for the y-axis, this is where you're going to change your height offset. I think it might be about 1.5 or something like that. We'll see if that 1.5 works. But um, that's basically your height offset for how high it is. But we're going to be doing the same thing, math, for the y-value. And then same for the uh, z-value as well. And then for the direction for uh, the DX, DY, and DZ, I'm just using the look vector for the entity, and this seemed to work just fine. And then you can adjust the speed uh, for how fast the thing does, like how fast the arrow goes. So this will make it um, easier to hit something, uh, more precise. And if you want to adjust the damage, then you could do something like one heart or something like that, and that will do only one heart of damage. Uh, there's also knockback and piercing that you can do as well for those settings. And then lastly, we're just basically adding the I, the sound for the crossbow, which is going to play at the same position as player as we have been doing. And then finally, what we're doing is we're going to reset the item to the first stage so we can reload again, which is basically all that we've been doing. So provided item stack in main hand, uh, we're getting the existing MBT variables, assigning that to a local variable, assigning the damage to a local variable. So when we change it, we can basically just apply it back. And then we're going to set our main hand, which is the first stage again, and like the, at the empty version. And then we're applying the MBT variables. We're going to set the damage to the, um, the item for the damage that we got from here. And then we're going to deal one damage to the main hand item. So this will basically allow us to get the damage, apply it back and then deal damage, which will allow it to break when it actually gets fully depleted. So that's basically all there is to it. Uh, that's all the procedures here for them. And I'll make sure to provide the workspace. Now these are all items again. So these are items and not range items. That's pretty much the only difference. I couldn't really think of, of a way to do it with a range item, so I did it with just regular items. But uh, yeah, I'll make sure to provide the procedures, the workspace, and the assets that I created uh, in a link down below in the description so you guys can use the assets or procedures or whatever you need for the actual system. But other than that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.